In her solitude, she constantly thinks of all the many ways her gifts have helped her. She thinks of how in one lifetime, she has lost a kingdom, her mother, her father, her two foster families, and the love of her life. She thinks of how the bull called her living weapon of mass destruction, able to create hurricanes and monsoons powerful enough to terraform the face of this planet. She even thinks of how T'Challa himself was convinced that Aurora was the reincarnation of a goddess from Wakandan lore, the Hadarial. She even thinks of how Ozymandias prophesied that she was destined to be a leader for her people. And these obsessive, compulsive thoughts confuse Aurora about who she really is now. Was she a weapon of mass destruction? Or a goddess? Or a savior? Aurora herself cannot decide. However, she is a survivor. She is determined that, since she is now on her own, she will find her kingdom and fulfill her own destiny for herself, by herself. And Aurora grows to actually enjoy being alone. She spends her time creating and maintaining beautiful lush environments, such as the one in Lake Manyara, rich with diversity of life. And she even saves lives along her travels, such as the lives of the fallen villagers near the edge of the Gorongoro crater. And, when necessary, Aurora is a hero for her people. Having been trained by Ahmed El Jabbar, the finest thief in all of Cairo, Egypt, and T'Challa, Aurora uses her skills and powers to fight crime as a vigilante. And Aurora comes to be loved by the people of Africa, and they coincidentally give her the superhero moniker the goddess. And though it initially makes her very uneasy, T'Challa had taught to Roro that symbolism is as important here as anywhere. Because Aurora was here, the people felt safe, and they were content. And a content people are a prosperous people. One fateful day during her patrols, Aurora makes out three figures in the distance on the Serengeti. As she approaches, she notices they are kneeling. At first, she thinks they are more villagers requesting her aid. But the eldest of the three tells Aurora that his name is Mashonga, and the two men with him were his sons. Mashanga says that the priestess of the tribe in Uzuri had dreamed of Aurora's coming at this time on this spot for many days. He says that these are not the kind of dreams that should be ignored. The dreams which had foretold the coming of Aurora, the goddess of life. Goddess of life, Aurora interrupts. She tells Mashanga that she knows of the gods, and she is beloved by the Bright Lady, but she herself is no god. Mashanga continues, however. He says that the priestess of their village knows a great deal about Aurora, and she even knows that like any god, Aurora's true power is accessed through worship. And Mashanga and his sons immediately begin to worship Aurora in their native Maasai tongues. Aurora begs them to stop, but the men do not respond. Instead, they pray and chant harder at Aurora's feet, and as they do, Aurora's body involuntarily relaxes completely, and she can feel her electrical energies building inside of her. A stiff wind developed around her body, holding her steady as it lifts her into the air, and within an instant, Aurora is at the center of a growing storm, miles in the air. The sky was showing its teeth, and Aurora reveled in the sound and fury of its bite. 
but what was happening to her? What was it about these men's prayers that made her feel so powerful? They called her a goddess, and at this moment, as she is engulfed in the brilliant lightning storm, it feels right to be called a goddess. Was this what Ozymandias predicted? Were these the people he prophesied of? Or was T'Challa right all along? Was she really a goddess? Once she manages to regain control of the storm, her mind and her body, Aurora lands. The men do not lift their heads though. Mashonga explains that his people are in desperate need and their priestess, having foreseen Aurora's arrival, sent them to bring her back to their village. Goddess of life whom wind and rains obey, Mashanga please, we beg you please to save our village. Our crops burn in the summer heat and our cattle are dying of dehydration. We will perish, please save us. And Aurora, still fascinated by what had happened to her, says that as always, she will help the people of Africa. But most importantly, she must meet their priestess. And Mashanga and his sons lead Aurora back to their village, which to her surprise, is in the southern foothills of the very mountain that she had made her home. The small village was in terrible drought. The people and the cattle were dying. And this instantly moved Aurora to tears. Crying forcefully, she tore open the sky and called down rain. Rain that lasted for days, eventually saving them all. But nature does not take kindly to such grand manipulation. Nature prefers balance.